force between the two point charges is given by Coulomb's law. And so we will start with the Coulomb's law, which states that. So let us start Coulomb's law. It states that if we have two point charges Q1 and Q2, then the force between two point charges is directly proportional to the product of the two charges. And if we are saying that R is the distance between the two charges, then its force will be inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two charges. If we combine these two equations, the combined will be F proportional to Q1, Q2 upon R square. When we remove this proportionality sign, we have to apply a constant. That constant is say it is small k, which is k q1 q2 upon r square. This k is basically constant of proportionality. And this value is given by 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught. After calculating this value, we will get 9 newton, this is power 9 newton meter square per coulomb square. What is this epsilon naught? It is known as permittivity of the permittivity of free space. Basically, it gives the effect of the medium when we are calculating the force between the two charges and its value is 8.85 into 10 raised to power minus 12 coulomb square per newton per meter square. So this is the force between two point charges but the force is a factor quantity so we must know what is the direction. It means we must learn how to write this coulomb's law in vector form. So next is Coulomb's law in vector form. For that we have to mention the force acting by the first charge on the second charge. So in vector form how will you write your Coulomb's law? That is force on 1 due to 2. Put this vector sign over. Force on 1 due to 2 is given by k q1 q2 upon R square into R21 unit vector. This R21 unit vector explains the direction of the force. So force on 1 due to 2 is K Q1 Q2 upon R square R21 cap and F21 vector is force on 2 due to 1 charge which is given by K Q1 Q2 upon R square into R12 cap. Now we know from the definition of unit vector that R12 cap is equal to minus of R2 and cap. That means if we compare these two equations 1 and 2 by comparing, comparing 1 and 2 and using the definition of unit vector, using the definition of unit vector, we can conclude that F12 is equal to minus of F21. Means another conclusion from this vector form is that Coulomb's law obeys, Coulomb's law obeys Newton's third law of motion. Obeys Newton's third law of Clear to everyone? So, what about if we have number of charges kept in a medium? Then force on a given charge due to other charges, we can find out using principle of superposition. So, next topic is principle of superposition. And the situation is, we have now more than two charges. Suppose we have Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q0 which is 
we are going to find out the force on this charge due to 1, 2 and 3 charges. So, force on this charge will be obtained by the vector sum of all the forces which are acting on this charge due to other charges and so on. This is known as principle of superposition. The point is when we are calculating the force between the two charges, then the presence of other charges will not affect the force between the two charges. This is the main concept of principle of superposition. We can show this result with the help of a diagram also. Now, this how will you calculate F01, F02, F03 using Coulomb's law. What is that Coulomb's law states that K Q0 Q1 upon R10 or R1 R square into R10 cap which is R10 square is the magnitude. So, we can write here like this also. This is the magnitude. So, like this. Then Q2 upon R20 square R20 unit vector plus Q3 upon R30 square into R30 cap and so. So, this is using Coulomb's law we have written the expression. Now, since it is a vector addition, so we must know how to express this vector addition with the help of a diagram. That means because we know that we have two types of or three types of vector addition that is parallelogram law of vector addition, triangle law of vector addition or polygon law of vector addition. So, how will you express this vector addition with the help of a diagram? For this let us assume we have one charge on which we are observing the effect of force on the charge due to two point charges Q1 and Q2. This is the arrangement we have taken that Q1 and Q2 this Q1 charges at a distance R1 from the origin and Q2 is at a distance R2. R1 and R2 are the position vector of the these two point charges and this Q0 is having R0 as position vector. Now, what we have to find out? Force on this due to this. Both are unit charges having same nature. So, force on this will be given by this is given by this direction F01 repulsion. Force on this due to this will be given by this F02. Both are repulsive charges. The resultant of these two will be obtained by completing the parallelogram. So, how will you complete the parallelogram? This is the parallelogram. This is the parallelogram we have completed. Now, the diagonal of this parallelogram will give me the resultant of these two forces. So, we will write this is what? For the resultant of F12. So, force on 1, force on this charge due to 1, due to 2. The resultant will be F12. So, diagonally, diagonal of this parallelogram will give us what? Resultant force. This will be more clear if we consider one more example. For this, let us assume 3 point charges which we have kept on an equilateral on the vertices of an equilateral triangle Q1, Q2, Q3 having side A. This is equilateral triangle and the magnitude of all these three charges is same say it is Q. Now the question is how to find out the force on the another charge which is kept at the centroid of the triangle. Centroid is a point of intersection of medians. So, and that charge is say capital Q. So, we have to find out the force on this charge due to this charge, due to this charge and due to this charge. So, this is Q1, this is Q2 and this is Q3. Now, we will find out again using vector addition. So, first this force on this due to Q2 will be in this direction, this is F2. Force on this due to this will be in this direction, which is F3. 
and resultant of these will be in this direction which is F23 and this F1 will be in this direction. So say it is A, po A point, this is B point, this is C point and this is A O. So force on this due to 1, force on given charge due to 2, force on given charge due to 3. How will you write it? K Q1 Q2, K Q upon distance O A square into, kiss that, in which direction it is along A O, along A O. Then F2, it will be K Q Q upon O B square along along B O then F3 it will be K Q Q upon O C square along C O clear to everyone now since O is the centroid so magnitude of O A is equal to magnitude of O B is equal to magnitude of O C clear it will be this so from this three expression one, two and three, what we can conclude that magnitude of F1 is equal to magnitude of F2 is equal to magnitude of F3, all these magnitude will be same. So let us assume it is F, magnitude is F. Now after finding this, let us try to find out the value of F23 and F1. F23 will be what? It will be the magnitude will be what? Under root F2 square using parallelogram law of vector addition F2 square F3 square plus twice of F2 F3 cos 120 degree, this will be what? 120 degree, clear to everyone because this is equilateral triangle. So this will be 120 and magnitude of F2 and F3 is same, we have assumed it is F. So what we can write? It is F square plus F square plus twice of F square and cos 120 is minus 1 by 2, clear to everyone? So this will be cancelled with this, so it will be what? under root 2 f square minus f square which is what under root f square and we say it is f. So f23 is magnitude of f23 is also what f and f1 magnitude is also f. So if we observe f23 and f1 resultant now we have to find out the resultant of f23 and f1 it will be what 0. So resultant of Resultant of F23 and F1 will be 0. Why? Because their magnitude is same. Their magnitude is same which is F and direction is opposite. Or we can say theta is 180 degree. So the resultant will be 0. Clear to everyone?